Hello, my name is Reed Redden and I'm a sheep and goat specialist for Texas A&M AgriLife Extension. Here, here with you today to talk about goats, uh, specifically goat grazing behavior. So it's commonly thought that goats will eat anything, um, which is actually not true at all. And the reason is, is goats are browsers. People may think they'll eat anything because they eat a lot of things that other livestock uh, species don't eat. Uh, but goats tend to be browsers. They like to eat leaves uh, from woody plants, which is what we would call browsing. And so this gives uh, ranchers and landowners and land managers all across the United States and the world uh, a unique ability to better manage their lands as compared to grazers that prefer grass such as cattle or sheep that are more intermediate feeders, they eat grass and browse and uh, forbs themselves. But goats prefer to eat browse. Um, one of the brush species that's a common problem in Texas is the juniper, or commonly called the cedar tree. And this uh, brush species is a problem because it has tannins and terpenes in it that will make the animals a little bit ill if they eat it. Uh, therefore, a lot of our livestock species don't eat it, except for goats. Uh, goats really do like to, to browse upon cedar and give us an ability to manage that cedar if done properly. So going back to goat browsing and their behavior. So a goat left to its own devices and native rangeland where it can select a variety of different things is going to eat um, up to 50% of its diet and browse. That may be some juniper and some other browse species. Uh, but juniper itself, because of the tannins and terpenes, typically restrict the goats to only eating 20 to 25% of their diet. This will vary throughout the year um, because in the in the winter, whenever there's less uh, palatable grasses and forbs and things, goats are going to browse more on this juniper tree. It will also vary by the cedar species. In Texas we have red berry and blueberry, and goats tend to eat the blueberry uh, more than the red berry. Uh, it will also vary based off the sex of the cedar plant itself. Uh, goats tend to browse on female plants more than male plants. So if you ever see two plants right next to each other and one has been browsed on more than the other, uh, it could very well be that there are two different sex species of, the, of that tree. And it also varies based off the size of the tree. A young tree, a seedling, something that's less than two or three feet in height, is going to have a lot less of the chemical defense mechanisms that an older, more mature tree will have. And so the younger the tree, the more in the seedling stage, the more that they can eat, at, eat it as a percentage of their diet. And then the breed of the goat. It's commonly thought that some of our native breeds, like the Spanish goat, eats more uh, juniper or cedar than some of um, the imported breeds. But actually what we've learned is there's just as much variation within the breed as there is a crossbreed. And so Texas A&M has actually developed a, a super juniper eating goat. And so the, how this goat was developed is we put goats in a pen such as this, uh, developed a diet that had this cedar in it, and put it in at different rates, 10, 20, 30, 40 percent of their diet, and then took fecal samples and ran it on an NIRS uh, machine. Developed equations and predictions so that we could then turn the goats back out on pasture and those that on pasture that voluntarily grazed more cedar than the others were bred uh, with each other. And so we, bred, we developed a high line and a low line. And over about a 10 year period, scientists at the San, the San Angelo Research Station and the Sonora Research Station worked in cooperation to develop a super juniper eating goat that instead of eating 20 to 25 percent of the juniper in its diet, eats closer to 40 to 50 percent of juniper in their diet, which gives landowners a better ability uh, to manage some of this brush that's, that's growing in and around the landscape. This is done in our meat goat breeds and it was also done in um, the Angora goats as well. We like to also call this goat the Aggie Cedar Eaters. And so um, these goats that have been developed have been uh, sold to commercial operations and entities who are then going to carry this on. And so if you're interested in, in some of these goats and some of these genetic lines, get with us at the Texas A&M Center here in San Angelo or Sonora and we can get you into contact with the people that have purchased these and we may have some uh, for sale ourselves. So if you own some land and you've got some cedar and you either have goats or you're interested in getting goats, you say, well, how many goats do I need based off of how much that's out there? Because they're not going to eat, eat it all and they're not going to eat it all at one time, so we've got to kind of make that calculation. 
So uh, what we've done is we figured out what uh, goats eat, and they'll eat somewhere between a half a pound and a pound and a half. That's if a goat eats, you know, four to five pounds per day, and they're eating 20 to 25 percent of their diet. The super juniper eating goats uh, can eat quite a bit more than this. But we're just going to use one pound as kind of the average of what a goat's going to eat. And then we got to know how much forage is on a tree. So if we have a two foot tree, we went through and clipped off all the little bitty pieces and leaves, the parts and the pieces that we know the goats will eat, and then weighed that out and measured it based off a of dry matter uh, amount. So a two foot tree uh, would, get, would have about a half a pound of forage. So one goat could uh, harvest all the forage off of one to two two foot trees. Now, they're not going to stop at one tree and eat it all. They'll nip on it and then move on to other things. So you'd have to restrict them to the area uh, to get them to effectively do that in one setting. Uh, a four foot tree, however, on the other hand, the forage goes up quite a bit. Now we're at five pounds of forage on a four foot tree. So it would take one goat five days or five goats one day to be able to harvest all the forage off of a, a four foot tree. And it just goes up from there. At six foot, we've got 10 pounds, so we would need 10 goats or, or 10 days with one goat to, to get that done. And then when we get up to a 10 foot tree, we're at 50 pounds of forage. So a good thing, to, an, int an important thing to remember here is at six feet, the goats can get to it. Uh, they can stand on their back feet and elevate up and eat, but about six foot is as high as a goat can get. So a lot of the forage that's on a 10 foot tree, they're not going to eat for two reasons. One, they can't get to it, and two, um, it's going to have a lot more defense mechanisms than a little bitty small tree. And so one of the best ways that goats can manage rangelands uh, for cedar is after something has happened to remove a lot of that cedar. So we've had a fire come through and burn up uh, the land and as that cedar is coming back and it's small little seedlings, uh, they can kill uh, 10 or 20 trees in a day if, if they're really small saplings uh, or seedlings or if we came through and mechanically cleared a place. So we can mechanically remove all of the trees, but the bad thing is, is it's likely in 30 to 50 years, they're all gonna return. If we use goat strategically, we could manage that brush to a minimal level indefinitely with good management. And there's a number of ranchers around the state that have, affected, have effectively, uh, effectively done that. So, just to summarize, uh, goats are browsers. They love to eat the leaves off of woody plants. Uh, they can be a very effective uh, prescribed grazing tool to help manage some of these brush species so that they don't overtake a landscape and create a monoculture of things that don't support a lot of livestock and wildlife.